Hi everyone. Today we are going to look at how we can define predicates inductively rather than by pattern matching equations uh, like we've done before. So uh, just as a recap, uh, here is how you would do it if you didn't have these inductively defined predicates. Uh, so I want to define the less than relation on the natural numbers. And I'm just doing it by writing down the equations that I want to hold. So I'm saying that 0 less than m, that's true, so that reduces to the unit type, which is to represent true things. Successor of n less than 0, that's false, so that's equal to the empty type, so there are no proofs of this statement, because a proof of this statement will be the same thing as a proof of false, which will be an element of the empty type, which by the name you hear is nonsense. And finally, I'm saying that the successor of n is smaller than the successor of m is the same thing as n being smaller than m, right? So n plus 1 is smaller than m plus 1 if and only if n is smaller than n. Uh, so that's how you would do it just as a recursive equation. And then it's quite easy to prove concrete instances of this, 2 smaller than 4 for example, because 2 is 1 plus 1, so that's sack of 1, 4 is uh, sack of 3, so this is the same as 1 smaller than 3, which is the same as 0 smaller than 2, which is the same as true. So in order to give a proof of this, we just have to give a proof in the unit type, which we can always do. Right? So this just computes down to something which is, in this case, true. And similarly, it's easy to for now, uh, it's easy to disprove concrete instances to say that 12 is not smaller than 3 because what we have to do now, well, we have to prove a negation, which means that we have to prove something implies bottom, but this something in itself is a proof that 12 is smaller than 3, which is defined to be the empty type if you work out what this reduces to. So we have some proof P that 12 is smaller than 3, and this p lives in the empty type, so let's look at what that could possibly be, pattern match on it, and we see that there can't be anything. This is an absurd um, assumption that we had, so there's nothing we have to do. So it's easy to prove and disprove concrete instances. Uh, and if you want to prove something more general, that's something that holds for every n, and not just for, for a concrete n, uh, then we do it the same way that we've done it so far, right? Because this is defined by pattern matching. So in order to make progress, we have to ask, why is this stuck? Uh, so here I want to prove that for every n, n is smaller than suck of n. So n is smaller than n plus 1. That seems quite reasonable, right? Okay, so why is this stuck? Well, it is stuck because n smaller than suck of n is none of these defining equations up here, right? I have something smaller than suck of n, but it has to be something more specific on the left-hand side. So in order to make progress, I have to pattern match on the n, this n, because this n being unknown is the reason why this thing is stuck. So let's pattern match on the n. Okay, in this case, uh, I now have to prove that 0 is smaller than 1, but that matches this first line, so now I have to prove something in the unit type. Right. Let's double check that. Yes, I have to prove something in the unit type. Okay, so I can do that. That's exactly one constructor, so I give that one. Okay, and in this case, I have to prove that suck of n is smaller than suck of suck of n. But that matches this last line, right? So that's going to be the same thing as n being smaller than suck of m, suck of n where we peeled off one sock on both sides, right? So let's see. Yes, that's what it says. But I can do that by doing a recursive call on n. Right, and you see that that matches. Okay, so it's just the same as before, right? We are proving something, but in fact, we are just writing a program. And we're asking, why is it stuck? So that we can make progress. The thing that's a bit more tedious is if we're not asked to produce something of this type, such as here, but we are asked to consume something of this type. So here we're given an assumption 
that n is smaller or equal to zero. And now we would like to make use of this assumption to prove that then n must in fact be equal to zero. Right. right. And now we have to do the same thing again. We have to ask why is this stuck so that we can extract some information from it? Because at the time being, we don't know what this thing is. So that means that we have the pattern match on the n to make this be something, right? So I'm going to bring the n into scope and I do that by just pattern matching on this thing, which isn't mentioned here yet. So I pattern match on n, that's just going to, so control C, control C, uh, that's just bringing it into scope. And now I can actually pattern match on the end, right? Um, okay, so Agda is going to be a little bit too clever for my liking when I do this. So I'm going to, uh, it's going to give me only the zero case. But I'm going to add in the sub case by hand just so we can see what is going on. Okay, but let's deal with the zero case first. So here we're asked to prove that zero equals zero, and we see that the p we have is something in the unit type. So that's not very informative. Let's put an underscore here. Uh, I'm not going to use it because I can always prove this with raffle. Right. And in this case, we have to prove that suck of n equals zero. That seems really hard to prove. Right. But the good news is that someone has given us an element of the empty type. Well, that also seems quite hard. So let's look at what that element is. Oh, it wasn't actually an element. This was impossible. So we don't have to do anything in this case because we had this proof that um, of the empty type, which was coming from here, right? Uh, okay, so we could do it, but we had to play the same game again where we, we tried to look at the end in order to make this reduce to something that we could use. So here it was crucial that we could use it to refuse this, refute this case. Uh, but at the same time, we had to make sure that we, the, the end we got actually made our goal provable. Right? So we have to juggle this a little bit, where we have, on the one hand, we have to make this reduce, on the other hand, we have to make this reduce possibly so that it works. So sometimes it would be nice if instead of doing this indirectly by pattern matching on the end to make this reduce, if we could just pattern match on the proof instead. So. This is exactly what we can do if we instead define this not by equations, but as a data declaration. So here I'm saying that less than is something which given to natural numbers and give me a type. And it has two constructors, uh, one called zero less than n and one called s less than s. Uh, and the first one constructs something for the specific indices 0 and n, so n is something that I implicitly quantified here. And this one says that if m is less than n, then suck m is less than suck n. Right. So it's very similar to the equations we had up here, except we didn't have to mention the false ones. The, this one is false by virtue of not actually being constructible here. Right. But for all the true ones here, we we added a constructor and the win is that now we can actually pattern match on these proofs and we can see there's going to be one or two of them so let's let's see how this works but before that let's just make sure that we can still do the concrete cases so to prove that two is less than four well what should we do uh, well we have to use one of the constructors uh, and it can't be the first one because that one only works for zero so it better be the second one right so can in fact refine this is the only one that matches and now what we have to prove here is that one is less than three right well the first one doesn't match again but the second one does match so if we refine we see that now we have to prove that zero is less than two we see that we're peeling off one suck each step right okay but zero less than two that actually matches this first constructor so we can still prove these concrete things right and similarly, we can prove that this is not the case. And how do we do it this time? Well, we have a proof P that 12 is less than three, and we have to produce something in the empty type. So the only chance we have is to make sure that this P is actually impossible. So let's pattern match on the P. So before this just made it disappear, right? It wasn't possible. But this time 
it could still possibly be one of these ones, right? Because 12 is successor and 3 is a successor. So it's possible that it's this one applied to something, which now have to prove that 11 is less than 2. Right, so let's continue pattern matching on P. It's not immediately obvious that this is impossible because it could be another of one of these successor less than the successor ones. If only we had to prove P that 10 is less than 1. Well, what could that P be? Well, it could be a successor successor of 9 less than 0, right? But now we see that this is actually definitely impossible because it can't possibly be the first one because the first one only applies if you have a 0 here, but we have a 9. And it can't be the second one because the second one only applies if you have a successor here, but we have a 0. So if we pattern match on the P again, we see that that's impossible. And we're done. Um, so we could still do it, but we had to do a little bit more work to uncover the clearly impossible case. Whereas when we defined it by recursion, then this was clearly impossible just by computation. A constructing evidence is basically the same as before, right? Um, because we don't know which constructor to use yet unless we know what the n is. So we have to pattern match on the n. And we see that if n is 0, then we're asked to show that 0 is less than 1. Well, we have exactly one constructor that, that could possibly do this, which is the first one. And in this case, we have to show that suck of n is smaller than suck of something. So we have exactly one constructor that could do this. It's this one, and then we have to show that n is less than suck of n. So that's another recursive call. Right. Uh, if I can give it an n as well. Uh, so that's basically the same as before if you compare it. Right? Nothing really new happened here. Uh, but now, when we a given some evidence, we can just pattern match on it rather than pattern matching on the n and making this disappear. Right. So here we are given a proof p that n is smaller than zero. Let's go up again so we can see this thing. Okay, so now we can pattern match on this proof p. And we see that, well, uh, there's only one constructor that possibly applies. It's this one, because this one only applies if the thing we are smaller at is a successor, right? So now, when we pattern matched on this thing, that meant this only applies if the n here is zero, right? So we only have to deal with the only possible case, which was this case, which means that n must have been zero all along. Just like when you pattern match on refo, you learn something about the other arguments, right? So that means that n has been unified with zero, and now it's really easy to just give back a refl because we have to show that zero equals zero, right? So if you do want to see what's going on, you can still bring in the implicit n. And now if I pattern match on the p, you see that what used to be an n has now just become a zero. And this little dot in front of it means that this is a forced pattern. We have no choice what to put here. And if I remove the dot, then uh, actually nothing will happen nowadays. But if I try to turn this into a n again, or a suck n rather, then I'm going to complain that this is not possible. But so let's put it back to dot zero. And raffle. Right, so this is a shorter proof than what we had up here, right? Here we had to explicitly pattern match on the end. Here we just pattern matched on the evidence and we only have to deal with the cases that actually matter to us, which was this this one. Uh, but there are in general, there are some trade-offs between pattern matching and defining things by data. So the pattern matching definitions compute, which means that we don't have to do this much work always. We just compute down to, to a base case, which is obvious. Um, but on the other hand, you can pattern match on the data, which means that you sometimes have to consider some fewer examples. So we're going to see more examples of how this works in, in the rest of the videos for this week.